our Chancellor, Dr. Malcuni, the Cabinet Secretary, today represented by Dr. Linda Winsey, the Governor of our state, our county, the Senator, all the chancellors from other universities who have come, all the vice chancellors who may have joined us from other universities as well. I'd like to also recognize the state officials of other categories, including the deputy speaker and others who are present. I'd like to note our parents who have come. I'd also like to acknowledge other leaders from academic institutions, particularly those who may have come from far and are visiting us for the first time. I'd like at this point to draw the attention of all to members of our council who are here, and because of the great sacrifice and role they make in determining policy of the university, I'll give a chance for them to stand so that we can recognize them. Members of council, please. I have a couple. I'll not mention each by name. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome. Last of all, uh, most important, I would like also to recognize our students and particularly graduating class. I'll restrict my remarks to just one or two areas. In the first instance, I want to join the Vice Chancellor in wishing and congratulating the class of 823 or so graduates who have successfully completed their studies. It may not be immediately obvious that uh, it, takes, it takes lots of effort to reach where you have. One of the contributions to that success is, of course, the Senate and the staff of the university. And we as a council would like to uh, heartedly congratulate both the students and the Senate and the faculty. Our students who are graduating, we know that you have worked hard. It doesn't, it's not easy to accomplish that task that you have. Uh, apart from individual self heart, self effort and work, we know that uh, that success also depends on the availability of facilities at the university. And it is those that I wish to devote my attention as Chair of Council. We probably may not have an ideal situation. Being a young university, we are struggling. In the past, we have had very generous support from the ministry in terms of financial allocation. And we have been able, with management, to put up a number of academic uh, structures or academically oriented structures, including tuition block and offices three of them. One of these is just completed, um, what we are calling tuition block two. Eventually it will be this uh, complex for engineering. This unit has cost about 312 million Kenya shillings to get completed. And there are others. We thank the Ministry of Education for this support. Also, 
we realize that um, being an institution in the hinterland, far from almost everywhere else, providing accommodation for our students is critical. And from the very beginning, the council has undertaken to provide as much of hostel facilities as possible. At the moment, we're just in the process of completing phase two of the hostels. And with this completed, we should be able to house uh, satisfactorily about 3,000 of the 6,000 students that we have on our campus. We realize that this is not enough, and therefore the university is partnering with others. The most prominent uh, is the partnership with the private sector, and thanks to the new policy in government that um, encourages this, this university, management and council, are in the process of concluding uh, arrangements where new hostels will be constructed with a private partner. If that is completed, we expect that an additional 5,400 students will be accommodated on our campus. I would like to thank the government for initiating uh, that uh, effort. We as council recognize that uh, it is not going to be as it was in the past with the generous support from the ministry. We have therefore uh, um, in the process approved with the support or with the initiative of management a resource mobilization policy that will allow us to tap and bring in support from elsewhere. On this line, we hope very shortly to recruit a director of institutional management to lead in that uh, strategy. Um, in terms of other aspects that make the student's life successful, we realize that staff are critical. In our last um, survey, we have been informed that the satisfaction index of our customers who are students is about 60%. That of our employees is about 65%. Obviously, the university will not progress significantly if both our customer and our employee are not motivated to work. So council has made deliberate decision to motivate our staff by improving terms of service here and there. For our students, apart from the hostels and the tuition block, this area being remote and dry as it is, we realize that the provision of water is critical. The council would like to thank management for having been able to construct storage facilities for water. At the moment, these facilities are at about 1 million liters, and our consumption is about 5,000 cubic meters, which translates to about uh, 5 million liters of water per month. Obviously, it means that we still have to make greater effort to stabilize the plant. Apart from water, we have challenges in terms of um, energy. Uh, at the moment, we consume about 5,000 kilowatts of energy, most of it connected to the grid. As an institution, we realize that we need to diversify this, and we expect, therefore, our staff and students to be engaged in uh, research on alternative methods of uh, uh, energy supply. On the infrastructure still, as a remote institution, we require access, and as everybody notices, our road infrastructure is still poor. 
the plans of the county government to have our access road to Kwanzaa tarmac. Maybe we need to give the governor a clap. <clears throat> Apart from this, we expect collaborations in other areas, uh, but um, maybe this is not the day to enumerate all of them. I'd like to express one more congratulations to our students who are leaving. As you go out to the job market, the focus should not be searching for employment. I think we have been reminded time and again that, uh, in fact, the focus should be uh, entrepreneurship, where we create employment opportunities for ourselves and the others. We saw on our television screens a young man from one of our universities indicate that uh, in Maasai land they had developed a power grid that uh, they can put around the bombers of cattle in the villages and this helps them to protect the animals against the life. This is uh, a university student and this shows how if we think, we innovate, we can generate employment for ourselves. I'm also reminded only yesterday or today, I was reading in the papers that there is a plant called Mukombero. I don't know whether you know that one. I come from Western, and this uh, a plant is a shrub, uh, a vinegar shrub, uh, that is known for enhancement of potency in males. The reason I'm bringing it up is that a group of students and others from the Kakamega Forest have found alternative use of this uh, plant. Uh, apart from virility, it is now known that it can help to uh, treat diabetes, lower blood pressure, and improve uh, the quality of our kidney. This is all people thinking outside the box so that uh, the same items are added value. It is going to be a challenge to you, our students, not just to seek employment, but to generate employment for others. Congratulations from us and the Council.